Welcome back to Face the State. I'm Ariana Bennett. Thank you for staying with us. Well, I am back with Juan Palma, State Director of the Nature Conservancy. Juan, thank you so much once again for your time. My pleasure. All right, so now in this segment, we get to hear about the Nature Conservancy. For those who aren't familiar with it, maybe just explain a little bit about what it does. Well, I'd love to. Nature Conservancy is a worldwide organization that is in 70 countries and every state of the union. And uh, I am the state director for the Nature Conservancy here for the state of Nevada. Okay. And you guys solve a lot of the same problems that a lot of environmental groups do, but you do it kind of differently. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's different in that the genesis of the Nature Conservancy back in the 1951 time frame is that we saw a problem in nature. In this case, it was a species that needed to be conserved. The solution at the time was, let's just buy the land through a private transaction. So the Nature Conservancy is not a governmental agency, it's not a governmental entity, either federal or state. We simply are a, a non-governmental entity. So they decided to buy that property, and that was the genesis. The words that we use is a land trust. In other words, we bought things that we thought needed to be protected for either plant reasons or, or other kinds of species. And that was the genesis. We began our chapter here in the state about 30 years ago. And we have played uh, a key role in many aspects that some citizens may not be aware of, that we actually have played a role to be able to conserve nature. Our mission is to protect uh, nature and to conserve uh, all of the things that require us to live you know, for our lives. Now, here in Nevada, what would you say are the biggest threats to that? Well, certainly a lot of things. Uh, you know, development is one. That as we see some development occur in many parts of, of the state, we're a very urban state, both in Las Vegas and Reno. And so the way that we protect certain segments of our state is really important. Uh, for example, uh, we, uh, the, the headwaters of the Truckee River, Independence Lake is just one of those lakes that provides that water source for the Truckee River, which is the water that we drink here in Reno in the Truckee Meadows and throughout the northern part of the state. So we actually acquire all of the property around the lake with a wonderful partnership with the NV Energy and others. We're able to acquire that beautiful uh, lake called Independence Lake. That's an example of where we, not only do we buy it for, for biological reasons, because Independence Lake has got one of the most beautiful trout uh, in La Honda Cutthroat is that exists there in that lake, and we bought it for those reasons. So we, we acquire those properties to protect both species, either plant or animal. And it is really beautiful. You can see it up on the screen there. Independence Lake is, is gorgeous. So you actually bought the whole lake? We actually bought all of the land around it. Oh, my goodness. How did you get the money for that? Well, as again, there was a wonderful collaborative partnership with NV Energy, with uh, some of our donors. We have donors that donate to us throughout the country. We have many thousands of uh, donors and uh, members of the Nature Conservancy here in this state and across the United States, across the world. And so they're able to provide some of the funds. And so we leverage those funds with other, other entities, uh, either organizations or companies or others, to be able to acquire those properties for the protection of those species, in this case, the Hunt and Cutthroat. In Bay in Nevada, as an example, we have another opportunity that we bought a couple of ranches to protect the, the pre to prevent listing of the Amargosa toad. And by the way, those are doing really well now. They were never listed. And so that's the kind of value add that we provide the citizens of Nevada. In this case, that was not listed by the Fish and Wildlife Service. We were able to conserve it and buy a couple of properties that really are doing well today. This is really, really an interesting concept, I think. Um, it didn't really occur to me that if you have an area that needs to be protected that you could just buy it. So it now, is it considered privately held or who manages that land? We manage it. So we, the Nature Conservancy, have uh, employees, staff, that actually manage those properties. For example, in the Carson Valley, we have River Fork Ranch. It's a beautiful property that uh, it's located right where the West Fork of the Carson, East Fork of the Carson meet. And that's a beautiful facility we acquired again. There has to be a reason why we acquire that. We don't just acquire properties for the sake of acquiring properties. The, our basis is science. We pride ourselves in our organization that everything that we do is founded in science. The, the foundation is science. And so science has guided us and led us that those are properties that are critical for us to acquire for the conservation of species. So that's an example. Now, are they still available for public use even after being purchased? Oh, yeah. Uh, the examples that I've used, if you go to Independence Lake, you're welcome to come to Independence Lake. In fact, we encourage people to come. We have several thousand visitors that come there. The only thing that we, they cannot do is bring their own private boats uh, for the quagga mussels and other issues. 
but we have boats that they can use, and they're free. So the public can come and use uh, kayaks, canoes, uh, have some motor boats, and we certainly invite them to come and enjoy Independence Lake. So yeah, they can come, they can hike, they can uh, have a picnic, they can do those things. River Fork Ranch, the same. The other thing that we do on those properties is that we have a lot of our school children that come and do several activities. Sixth graders, fifth graders, they come and enjoy those properties. Not only those that I mentioned, but we have some here on the Truckee River. McCarran Ranch is another one that we have. So McCarran Ranch, we have several thousand children that come every year to enjoy not only the facility, but learn about science, learn about nature. And so we restore about 11 miles, 12 miles of the Truckee River on behalf of the citizens here of the state. Now, it's a, obviously a huge benefit to the environment to preserve these species and, and prevent them from um, becoming endangered or, or extinct. Um, but it's also, it serves a purpose in, in terms of um, keeping land under local and state control versus um, being overseen by the federal government, right? When a species gets listed, then the federal government can come in and they can impose certain um, rules on an area, correct? Yes. And so it helps. I mean, it helps the citizens by us being able to protect that species and let it continue, such as the example of the Amargosa toad that is doing well today. The nexus with us, the Nature Conservancy and public lands, is that we've come to the realization that while we can buy some of those properties, there's some simply small pieces of land that are really connected to a larger ecosystem. And that larger ecosystem includes public lands. So we really, while we can do everything we can and we are to protect some of these properties, we need the rest of the land base to be able to truly address a much larger ecosystem and its needs. We're simply a small little part of the larger whole. But it's still a role that you're playing and, and helping in that end, um, which I think most people don't want um, federal oversight of public lands, you know, when it comes to endangered species, or am I wrong in that? Well, it certainly brings another layer, another level of scrutiny for the citizens that live in that area where this particular uh, list of species might be. You know, right now there's a concern about sage grouse in the northern part of the state. That's an example of where there is uh, concern about the citizens, you know, what can and can't they do on some of the public lands. And so we are working right now with the Nature Conservancy, are working on, on with sage grouse through our scientists. We have several scientists on our staff who are looking at ways that we might be able to restore habitat, we might be able to improve the conditions of the habitat for sage grouse. And that's how we can provide value add, not only to the local citizens, uh, but also to the federal agencies that may need our scientific work. We pride ourselves in being in the, uh, so that we're not a litigation organization. We're trying to find solutions to some of these issues. Do you hit a lot of roadblocks in what you do? You know, for, for, for the most part, the Nature Conservancy is viewed as a, an organization that doesn't, again, our foundation is science. And, and so because it is science, it is difficult for folks to agree, to, to disagree with some of the findings that we, that we arrive at. And so we find that uh, for the most part, most people are accepting of the things that we're doing out on, on the landscape. There may be a few that are not, but for the most part, they do. Okay, in terms of funding, do you have everything you need? Do you need donations? Do you get grant money? How does it work? Uh, we get two kinds of funding for the most part. One is just individual donors. And so we'd encourage uh, the listeners to certainly go check our website, nature.org uh, forward slash Nevada. And you can go in there and find all the information that I'm talking about and way more. We encourage them to go visit that website, nature.org slash Nevada. And the other one is that we do, uh, we get gr grants from either state and or federal. We know we get grants to do certain activities. That's how we're able to restore 12 miles of the Truckee River through grants that we received. And, and that's how we get most of our funding. Okay. Um, I guess we've got a couple minutes left. What would you most want um, people to know about what you do? Uh, first, that we, we love nature, and that we believe that most citizens love nature as well. Uh, we all enjoy having a, a, a clean glass of water every day. Uh, we all enjoy just simply, when, once in a while, getting outside and just getting away from the city. And so all of us, I think, have those things in common, no matter what, who we are and what we do. So I would say Nature Conservancy helps us all to achieve those things that we all want. And I, I keep saying that nature really unites us. Nature is one of those things that really gives us a, uh, so, so let us breathe when we go outside. 
Also, I think uh, that we, the Nature Conservancy, are really focused on our youth to be able to connect them to nature. And those are the things that some people may not know that we do, but we actually are quite active on that. Okay, so people can get their kids involved as well? Yes. All right. Um, any other programs, anything you want to say? One minute left. Uh, only to say that uh, we, the Nature Conservancy, are, are really in, uh, as, our, as our science base, we are looking for ways that we can improve our lives here in this state as it relates to agriculture, to nature, and water is one of those things that, while we have a lot of water this year, there may be other years that we may not have enough water. And we're quite engaged in discussions about how best to use our water, the limited water that we have in the state. So I would encourage all of our listeners and viewers to go to our website, learn more about, learn more about these topics, and I encourage them to call me, write me, and let me know what they think about some of the things that we're doing. Okay, Juan, thank you so much for your time. I sure appreciate it. My pleasure. Well, that's it for this episode of Face the State. But for more information or to see past episodes, you can just head to our website. That's ktvn.com. Thank you so much for being with us. See you next week.